How's it going, Eliminators? Today we're working on a Craftsman riding lawnmower, so let's get right into it. So we got a Craftsman here. It uh, was given to us for free, so uh, we didn't have anything into it. And it's uh, got a 15 horse engine on it. Uh, it's not that bad shape. The uh, rider itself is in pretty good shape. We put a little bit of tape on the seat because it was ripped there. Like I said, it's got a 15 horse industrial commercial Briggs and Stratton engine on it. So this engine's already been uh, tuned up. We changed the oil, got a new air filter on it, spark plug, changed the uh, high tension lead boot. So the spark plug cap changed that as well. We didn't have to put a new battery into it because the one that was in it, uh, it was dead. But after we let it uh, sit on charge for about 48 hours, it took a good charge. So that's a bonus. But after we changed the oil and we were running it, we noticed uh, an oil leak right around here. So I got a rag stuffed in here. And if I can get a shot for you guys, um, after I wiped up all of the oil, uh, we noticed that the oil was actually leaking right from in here. So uh, this is your sump down here. So on these engines, you guys might be able to see, but they're split, right? So right there is where you have a gasket going all the way around your engine, which I'll show you afterwards. But uh, basically that's your sump where it holds all your oil. And then that's your, uh, your engine block up top. And uh, we're actually getting an oil leak from right in there. Uh, where the gasket goes. So what I got to do is uh, Remove the engine completely and I'm in the process of doing that right now. So there's three or four engine mounts and uh, One of them's right there the other one you guys can see Right back there and then uh, there's a, a couple on the other side. So to get access at these uh, bolts You guys can see there's one right there. That's the 9 16 bolt So basically I just had to take the 9 16 bolt right there um, out of that pulley and uh, once I got that off like I said I just pulled it right off so now we have enough slack where I can uh, once we uh, pull this engine through I can have enough slack now to uh, just wrap this belt around it and uh, pull that right out uh, we're gonna pull this straight up so you guys can see they have an actual hole that's fairly big it's actually bigger than your deck uh, pulley here so you don't have to remove this uh, drive and deck pulley, stack pulley. Uh, you don't have to remove that. You can just pull your engine with your crankshaft and this uh, pulley stack all up through there, um, all in one, which is nice. Then I'm gonna have to uh, come up top and start disconnecting all of this stuff. So uh, my starter cable, um, any of uh, these connectors here, uh, all of that stuff has to be disconnected, as well as our throttle linkage here and our fuel line. Now we did put a brand new fuel filter and a fuel shutoff valve on so I can just uh, disconnect it right from here and uh, I don't have to worry about you know fuel coming right out of the tank. And they also make a slot here that's hopefully big enough so that I can pull this uh, engine out with the muffler still intact. Uh, if I can't do that then I'll have to disconnect the muffler. But basically this engine has to come out 100% to uh for me to be able to fix that issue of uh, the leaking oil. I don't want to sell it with uh, an oil leak. And uh, my guess is, because you guys didn't see this before we washed it, there was about that much oil, grass, mud mixture uh, coating the bottom of this uh, frame on this uh, riding lawnmower. So my best guess is that uh, the guy that owned it before us, or you know, before that guy, uh, noticed that there was an oil leak, never did anything about it except just add oil. So this thing may have never had an oil change. He might have just added oil as it, uh, you know, went down and leaked out. And uh, that was it, guys. There was just so much oil. So we uh, put this thing up on the Mojack, which you guys have seen before, and uh, power washed it underneath just to clean it up as best we could. Uh, there's still tons of oil under there. But uh, at least we got the majority of the oil out of, uh, you know, where the uh, drive belt goes and whatnot. So uh, we actually drove this thing around. It runs awesome. Uh, we cleaned the carburetor on it. You guys have seen me do that stuff before, so I'm not going to include that. So here's the deck that we pulled off of it. It did come with a deck. However, we can't use this deck. Um, if we look, we can see it's been patched here with uh, some metal. And on the other side, they've bondoed it. So it's... Uh, tons of bondo on the top of this thing. Uh, the problem is they also bondoed a ton underneath here. So not sure if you guys are getting a good shot of this, but 
that's all Bondo. All of this right here, this whole chunk here, guys, you can see it's, it's wavy and that's not metal. Hear that? That's all Bondo, everything. Here's another metal patch that they did. So they went and uh, patched underneath it. Uh, none of this is welded. I think they just put a piece of metal on the underside, formed it in, and then just slapped Bondo on top of it. Uh, but basically, guys, we can't use this deck. So what uh, I've done, or what I've started to do, is uh, just mark out with some soapstone uh, a nice little patch. And we actually went down to our parts guy there in St. Catharines and picked up a, a used deck. But it does have some rot in this area right here. So I measured out about uh, six inches there, I think, and two inches here. And we're going to cut out this section and then we're going to cut it out on the other deck. And then I'm going to take uh, the good piece from the bad deck. And then I'm going to remove the bad piece, as you guys can see right here, from the good deck. And then I'm just going to hopefully uh, take that other piece, put it right in, and then we're just going to weld it in solid. So I've done the same thing here. I've measured two inches here. And then, uh, well, there used to be a bracket here, but we ripped that off and I measured six inches there. So hopefully, this is about the same. You guys can see I've already started to cut it uh, just with a, an angle grinder there on the floor. Uh, but the problem is it's hard to get into uh, some of these areas uh, just because, uh, you know, there's only a little bit of overhang on that disc. So what we're going to do is uh, go out and buy a plasma cutter or we're going to get one used. And uh, that'll be a lot easier for uh, cutting steel the way that we're doing it. Um, it'll just, you know, blast right through. I won't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting the angle grinder in uh, weird positions. It should just blast it right through and uh, it should be a lot quicker too. But all in all, guys, this thing's uh, not that bad other than the, uh, the hundred we spent on that deck, which uh, in my opinion, we spent a little bit too much, probably would have been a good deal at about uh, maybe 50 or 60 bucks because we do have to do some fabrication, but uh, you win some, you lose some. Also, both of these rear tires were flat and uh, weren't holding air. We went and got a tube put in that one, and uh, we also have to go and uh, get a tube put in, in the right one. So as of right now, the total that we have into this uh, machine is uh, 30 bucks for the, uh, the one tire over there and a hundred dollars for the deck that we got which uh, isn't that bad um, but again uh, we're gonna have to get that tube done as well so that's probably another 30 bucks we put oil into it and an air filter uh, so we're gonna have to drain that oil out uh, once i split that to uh, replace that gasket uh, but other than that guys we don't have that much money into it okay so i've got the fuel line removed now now we're ready to remove our throttle cable and uh, a quick little tip that i can uh, share with you guys is take a little permanent marker and mark just right ahead of where the cable is on this little mounting bracket so that when you take this off and you go to put it back on you'll put this cable in the exact same position because remember guys uh, if you put this farther forward now your lever on your dashboard which is up here uh, is going to put the throttle in a different position so you could have it all the way up and now it's pushing your butterfly valves on your carburetor even farther forward. So again, we know that this works perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to mark it just like that. And same thing on this side. We've removed our starter cable and uh, we've unplugged all of our little connectors here. We're ready now to uh, undo the four engine bolts. Okay, so we got the engine bolts finally out and I'm ready to... Uh, pull this engine right off. So apart from the drive belt that uh, might get snagged up, this thing should come straight up and out. Okay, so on second thought here, I'm going to be removing the uh, muffler here. And uh, while it's off, we might as well hit it up with some uh, high temp uh, black paint. And because these are hex heads, guys, I'm using a quarter inch hex drive on uh, my socket here. And uh, we're just taking those two bolts out. This one come out nice and easy. The other one's loose already. So I'm gonna take that right off. I took the hood off. Uh, this is pretty simple to take these hoods off. You just got to uh, disconnect your uh, light harness right there. And then uh, once you get it to about, uh, I'd say a 45 degree angle, you should be able to lift it straight up. So you just want to come up to your hood, get it to about a 45 degree position. It should come straight up like that, guys. So if we take a look here at how they mount, uh, there's a bar on the frame and uh, it just slips in right, right like that, guys. So again, uh, put it to about a 45 degree angle. You should be able to lift that straight out and the hood 
comes right off. Okay, and there's gonna be a bracket here with a, a bolt going to the front of the engine. And uh, don't forget, guys, you're gonna have a gasket uh, going in between your muffler and uh, your engine, so you don't wanna lose that. So I uh, just put that off to the side. But uh, you guys can see now the engine sideways, so it's uh, completely disconnected now from uh, everything else, and uh, we're right ready to uh, pull it straight up. Okay, so we got the engine pulled off, and because we had the muffler off, we hit it with a little bit of high heat flat black paint. And we got our engine up here on our table. Uh, this is the sump gasket that we're going to be replacing, and we also purchased um, an oil uh, crankshaft seal, so this uh, seals the uh, oil around your crankshaft so that uh, none of the oil from inside of the sump leaks out around the crankshaft. Um, if we're going to be pulling the sump, we figured we might as well uh, buy one of these. There's your part number right there. So uh, hopefully this thing shouldn't leak oil anymore. So uh, we drain the oil out of it, but uh, we'll put oil back into it, get it back onto the machine, bolt it up the opposite way of uh, how we took it apart, and uh, hopefully this thing won't leak. Okay, so we finally got our parts in. We got uh, some true blue, so these are both Kevlar belts. We got a half by 87, that's for the deck, and then we got a half by 95, and that's for the drive belt. So these are Kevlar belts, they're a little bit more expensive, but uh, we didn't want to cheap out because uh, the customer that uh, we're going to be selling this to, he specifically asked for Kevlar belts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is uh, slip the belt through our shifter linkage. So you just want to get that in that position and then uh, put your belt through. Now basically what you do here is you just slip this in this way and then uh, pull your end back. And then once it's uh, underneath uh, this like cover here, then you can put this belt at the back around the pulley and uh, this belt around the front at the engine pulley and uh, you don't have to disconnect your shift lever. So this is a quick little way of, uh, you know, getting past that. So it ends up being something like that. So you guys can see now that uh, it's on the back of the shifter linkage. So now we don't have to disconnect the shifter linkage at the uh, transmission there. Now we've taken the battery out so that uh, you can you know, get at the pulley a little bit easier because you are going to have these little belt keepers that you're gonna have to get your belt through. So there's one right there as well. And uh, it's kind of a pain if you're doing it from the bottom up. A um, little bit easier doing it this way, but you don't need to do this. You should be able to do it, uh, you know, just from the bottom. Okay, so just to show you how easy it is to do it from the bottom, um, I'm just gonna film from here because, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to film from here to show you. But, uh, you know, so we got our belt and we got our keeper. So what you wanna do is get your belt pinched in between the keeper and the pulley here, and then just take your pulley and rotate it, and it'll uh, set down in there nicely. Same thing on the other side, get it in there, and then just rotate your pulley, and it's pretty easy, guys. So uh, once you uh, get both sides in, just make sure that uh, you're seated in behind the flywheel at the back so that uh, it doesn't fall you know, down underneath the uh, pulley here. So just reach in there and uh, make sure that your belt is you know, around that pulley. Okay, then go ahead and wrap your belt around the uh, front pulley here of the engine. Now, remember, this is the drive belt, so we're gonna have to go up to the top pulley and wrap this belt around that one. So do what we've done, and uh, basically we've dropped the engine in, but we haven't bolted it up yet because uh, it's a little easier to move the engine around uh, to give you enough slack to uh, you know get up over that pulley and whatnot. Okay, and then once you get your belt wrapped around the top pulley, it's gonna be loose still because again, we don't have the idler pulley uh, hooked up to uh, take out any of that slack. But what you're gonna wanna do now, guys, is uh, take your belt and uh, again, make sure that the V side is towards the inside. So you wanna have V side here and then again, V side there um, because this is a V belt. So what you're gonna wanna do is put the flat side towards that pulley there so that the V comes towards the inside. Uh, that's a fixed pulley, so that pulley does not move. And uh, the one that does is the idler pulley and we're gonna have to hook that up now. So again, you guys are just gonna wanna go inside those belt keepers just like that. Okay, now we're still on the left side of this machine. So before you go any farther, what you're gonna wanna do is come up under here by your uh, left deck hanger you see this bent up piece of rod here? That's another belt keeper. So what you're gonna wanna do is come up around and hook your belt in so that it drops in just like that. So you're inside of that loop. Okay, now here's another thing. This is uh, another belt keeper up here. So you guys can see this is just a piece of round bar that they got all bent up and it bolts right there. Now that bolt right there goes to that nut right there. 
So that's right in behind the engine. Again, the benefit of leaving your engine loose is that you can push it up far enough because uh, when we drop this engine in, we dropped it on the wrong side of this belt keeper. But as you guys can see, it moves. So what we're gonna do is take that bolt out, take the nut off, loosen this off, and move this to that side of the crankshaft, and then uh, I'll bolt it back up. Now I could pull the engine and then push this over and then drop it back in, but I really don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna loosen that off, move it to the other side, and then tighten it back up again. Okay, now this part's pretty easy. So it's got two little locating tabs, and then that just goes back the same way, but uh, what you guys wanna make sure is that that bar goes on the outside of your belt, and the little piece on the other side, make sure that goes on the outside of the belt as well. Okay, next thing you wanna do, apply your parking brake. When you apply your parking brake, it's gonna take this lever right there, that's what our idler pulley bolts to, and it's gonna pull it out just like that. So normally that thing's going from here to there, but now it's pulled out to there because we got the parking brake engaged. So now we can put on our idler pulley. So the way a drive belt works on uh, this particular model, so when you have your foot on the brake, it uh, pulls out your idler pulley and uh, puts slack on the belt. You guys can see it's loose. Now when you let your foot off of the brake and you wanna go and it's in gear, this idler pulley pushes back on this belt right here, which puts tension on your belt. And you guys can see when you apply pressure, it tightens it up against the drive pulley on the top of the crankshaft there. So you take your foot off the brake, it tightens it up and you go forward and you put your foot on the brake and it releases the tension, putting slack on the belt so that your crankshaft pulley spins freely without putting friction on the belt. Okay, so next step is uh, we're gonna be putting our bolt this little belt keeper and then our pulley up onto our idler bracket up here. So what you're gonna wanna do is go bolt, then that bracket, then this is gonna go over top just like that, and then your pulley here is gonna go with that little spacer towards the bracket on the bottom. So I'll show you how that looks once I get it all together. Okay, so the easiest way to get your idler belt onto your idler pulley here is go ahead and with this loose sink your belt into the idler pulley just like that right so you have enough slack to the point where you can push it back far enough and with your brake on you know you should have plenty of room to be able to get your belt in there so again spacer side down we can go ahead and slide our belt keeper in here we're going to be running that to this side so it'll come off with that little hook on this side and we're going to be putting this belt keeper in so what you want to do is have it to that side so basically we're going to be putting uh, this little guy over top of this bracket here but underneath the pulley so you're going to want to go up and uh, just slip that in between there you guys can see it's got this little tab here so that will rest on this edge so I'll show you once I got it all back together so it's going to look just like that guys so you're going to have your uh, your idler bracket coming out, your bolt going in, then your belt keeper, and then your pulley. Again, spacer side down, and then we can go ahead now and put our nut up on top there, holding it with a 9 16 wrench, and I have a 9 16 socket there to tighten it up. Okay, so we got everything tightened up now. So, if I release our parking brake, you guys can see, just like that, obviously the engine slid back because it's not bolted up yet but uh, basically that's it guys you push your brake it loosens up your belt so the uh, engine crankshaft here keeps spinning but it doesn't transfer any power and then when you let your foot off of the brake or the brake clutch it puts tension on the belt which then transfers the power back to your transmission well that's it for part one guys if you enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up you can click here to subscribe, and once part two is uploaded, you can click over here to watch that video. I upload every week, so be sure to come on back next week and see what we got new on the channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.